okay so in now this video we will be covering a question that has super normal growth so what if the growth rate is 30 percent for three years before achieving long run growth rate so over here our oh, sorry our d naught is still two our r is still 13 percent so this is in continuation to the first example that we started off with now we're going to assume that the growth rate is 30 percent for three years usually when a business starts up at that point they are expanding the business grows really quickly so in the initial years usually businesses grow at a very fast rate but after some time period once they reach their maturity level their growth rate is going to slow down and over here after three years it is assumed that the business will keep on growing at the six percent rate now you can no longer use the constant growth model to find the stock value over here so you cannot use basically this model to find the stock price because the growth rate is changing it's no longer constant in order to use this model the growth rate has to remain the same till infinity so ye wala formula use karne ke liye essential hai ke growth rate infinity tak ek hi rahe now over here you can see that the growth rate is changing it's starting with 30 percent hai per 6 percent hai so you cannot use this formula for the starting three years because infinity tak 30 percent ka growth rate nahi jayega growth rate meet me se change ho jayega and it will become six percent Yes, six percent ke baad wo infinity tak isi us pe rahega growth rate pe rahega. This is a long run growth rate, which is also called the sustainable growth rate. So, however, the growth does become constant after three years. So, after three years, you can use this formula. Infinity tak jab ek hi growth rate rehta hai, to ye formula use ho sakta hai, or else you cannot use this formula. So let's now solve this question for that I'm going to open a note once again. Okay, so basically <laughs> during the first three years, the growth rate is I need more space. Wait. Okay, so this is the timeline. And during the first three years, so during the first three years, till here, the growth rate is 30%. Now over here, the third year ends. Remember the points on the timeline represent the end of the year. So this is the first year end, second year end and third year end. Over here the third year ends and the fourth year starts. So after the third year, once the third year ends and the fourth year starts, the growth rate will be 6%. And this is the long run growth rate. So it's going to go on till infinity. So afterwards, every dividend will increase at this 6% rate. <coughs> now the current dividend is 2. So first we are going to find out the dividend streams. So we are going to, and we need to find out what will be D1, D2, D3, D4. So in order to do that, we are going to increase this. 2 is going to increase by the 30 percent growth rate so d1 will increase by 30 percent d naught is 2 1 plus 0 0.3 this will become 2.6 so d1 is 2.6 now this 2.6 will again increase at the 30 percent rate so d2 will be Oh, 
sorry, zero point three. This will become three point three eight. Again, increase this. By the thirty percent rate, this will become four point three nine four. Now, once you increase the dividend after this, after this point, the dividend is going to grow at the six percent rate. It's no longer growing at the thirty percent rate. Instead, it will grow at the six percent rate. In order to form D4, so for calculations of D4, you're going to use 4.394, and you're going to apply a growth rate, but you're no longer going to use the 30%. Instead, you're going to use the 6% growth rate. So this will be 4.658. Okay, this point is essential that after this point, after the end of the third year, third year तक जो growth rate हो रही है वो thirty percent के हिसाब से हो रही है. लेकिन जब third year खत्म हो जाएगा तो उसके बाद जो growth होगी वो six percent के rate के हिसाब से होगी. So this will over here you will use the six percent rate in order to find D four. So this is your cash flow stream. So first step is to find out your dividends. And usually the point where the question is shifting from the uh, super normal growth rate to the constant growth rate, उससे एक साल ज़्यादा dividend आपको निकालना होगा, ठीक है? So in order to complete these steps, you will see these steps later on. Okay, so this was step number one to find out the dividend till D four over here. Okay, so once you have these dividends, the next step is to find out P three. Now, why are we choosing this point and no other point? Because at this point, the question is becoming constant forever. So over here, you can use the constant growth. Formula. You cannot use the constant growth formula over here. Basically, this is the constant growth formula. In order to calculate the selling price at the end of the third year, you need the dividend of the fourth year. That's why we calculated it till year four. Now, in order to use this formula, remember the growth rate has to remain the same till infinity. So after this point, the growth rate is not going to change. It will remain six percent till infinity. But if you had calculated P two again, the growth rate was changing. It was thirty percent, then it was becoming six percent. Even at P one, the same problem was there that the dividend, uh, the growth rate was thirty percent for the two years. Then it was going to change to six percent. But after this point, the growth rate is no longer going to change. It is going to remain the same. So you always have to identify this point. This point is very important. Now you can put the values in order to find the price. So D four is four point six five eight. Your R was thirteen percent, and the growth rate over here is six percent. So you're calculating at this point. And you're using D four, so D four has grown at the six percent rate. Yes, yeah, so you're going to use the growth rate of six percent. If you calculate this, the price at the end of the third year is coming sixty six point five four. So this is the price at the end of the third year. तो ये पॉइंट जो कि थ्री के ऊपर है ये आइडेंटिफाई करना बहुत ज़रूरी है एंड आप यहाँ पे ये वाला फॉर्मूला इसलिए यूज़ कर सकते हो विच इज़ द कांस्टेंट ग्रोथ मॉडल बिकॉज 
इस पॉइंट के ऊपर ग्रोथ रेट सेम रहेगा इन्फिनिटी तक सो अब ग्रोथ रेट चेंज नहीं होगा इट विल रिमेन द सेम टिल इन्फिनिटी वेर एज बिफोर दैट द ग्रोथ रेट वॉज नॉट कॉन्स्टेंट इट वॉज गोइंग टू चेंज ओवर हेयर नाउ वंस यू हैव द प्राइस एज वेल सो एम गोइंग टू अपडेट दिस ओके सो वंस यू हैव द प्राइस एज वेल सो नाउ यू हैव पी थ्री विच इज सिक्सटी सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव फोर नाउ दिस क्वेश्चन इज सिंपली योर डिविडेंट डिस्काउंट मॉडल क्वेश्चन दैट वी डिड इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर सो नाउ एन इन्वेस्टर हु परचेजेज अ स्टॉक ओवर हेयर एट पी नॉट बिकॉज यू ट्राइंग टू फाइंड द करेंट प्राइस इफ द इन्वेस्टर इज परचेजिंग द स्टॉक ओवर हेयर ही विल गेट द फर्स्ट ईयर डिविडेंट ओके लेट मी जस्ट चेंज द कलर so he will get the first year dividend the second year dividend and the third year dividend plus at the third year you know what is the selling price so you can assume that at the third year the stock will be sold out and once he sells the stock over here this is the expected price at that time so this is the price he will get over here so basically this is the cash flow for an investor who will purchase the stock right now so you have to find the present value of this cash flow that will be the stock's current price to abhi agar koi stock khareed raha hai use pehle saal ka dividend milega dusre saal ka dividend teesre saal ka dividend plus third year pe aapko price pata chal gayi hai so third year pe aap assume kar sakte ho ki wo yahan pe apna stock sell kar dega jab wo third year pe sell kar dega to use third year ki प्राइस भी मिल जाएगी और जब उसने स्टॉक सेल आउट कर दिया तो फ्यूचर के डिविडेंड्स आप उसे नहीं मिलेंगे योर क्वेश्चन इज जस्ट गोइंग टू स्टॉप ओवर हेयर सो लेट्स यूज दी डिविडेंड डिस्काउंट मॉडल डी टू वन प्लस आर टू दी पावर टू plus d3 so it's going to dividend 3 and you're going to sell the stock over here so your question stopping at p3 is so, aage timeline pe nahi ja raha 1 plus r to the power 3 we can plug in the values d1 is 2.6 1 plus okay so the rate is 13% power 1 then we have 2.38 power 2 okay why do we have power 1 power 2 because you are calculating basically the present value over here and this is coming back one year so power 1 this is coming back two years so power 2 and this is will come back three years so power 3 94 plus 66.54 1 plus 0.13 and power will be 3 so if you solve this your answer is going to come 10 so the stock price came 54.11 Now over here, we assume that we are selling the stock over here. That is something that I have told you in order to make it simpler for you. But in reality, it is not essential that you are selling off your stock over here. This is not necessary. The stock you are selling is not necessary here. Basically, remember this: that the price of the stock is the present value of all future dividends. Which means d one se leke infinity tak. So d one se leke infinity tak. Jitne bhi dividends hain, un sab ki apne present value nikalni hoti hai in order to find out ke stock ki price kya hai. Now this p three over here, it is calculated using the constant growth. 
formula which is this and what does this formula assume it assumes that the present value of all dividends is being calculated from d4 till infinity now basically ye jo aapne yahan pe calculation ki hai isme d1 included hai d1 se infinity tak ja rahe hain hume d2 included hai d3 included hai and what is this this is p3 which is d4 till infinity all dividends d4 से लेके infinity तक जितने भी dividends हैं उनकी आपने price uh, present value figure out कर ली till the third year फिर आप उसे तीन साल और पीछे ले आए that is what's happening over here so this is still the same formula that you studied earlier the original formula the dividend discount model is it goes till infinity right if you remember it it's like this and it goes till infinity over here so all dividends from d1 till infinity if you find out the present value of that that is the price of the stock this is what's happening over here as well you're finding the present value of d1 d2 d3 and d4 to infinity is actually included over here so all of the dividends till infinity are included in this formula and you are finding the present value over here if this is difficult for you to understand you can simply uh, use the other method which is simpler that wherever you have the price you can assume that you will sell the stock over there if you are selling the stock to ऐसे इन्वेस्टर की कैश फ्लो क्या हो जाएगी उसे D1, D2, D3 मिलेगा और थर्ड ईयर की प्राइस मिलेगी उसके बाद के डिविडेंड्स उसे नहीं मिलेंगे फॉर कैलकुलेशन पर्पजेज यू कैन एज्यूम दैट ओके सो आई वॉन्ट टू क्लोज दिस दिस इज वॉट वी हैव ऑलरेडी सॉल्व दिस इज वॉट वी डेड Now find the expected dividend and capital gain yield during the first and fourth years. So first we're going to do it for the first year. The dividend yield formula is Now what was D1? Okay, what is this? Okay, so D1 was 2.6 if you go back to your previous calculations and the p not was 54.11 which you calculated so the dividend yield will be 4.81 percent okay and the other thing that you require is the capital gains yield now in order to calculate the capital gains yield use the formula is this you will have to calculate p1 but that will make it really long so another way of doing this is that you know what r is right the required rate of return which i told you in equilibrium can be equal to the expected rate of return is 13% so basically you have the total return and dividend yield plus capital gain yield so you already know this is 13% and you know that the dividend yield is 4.81% so you can figure out the capital gain yield from here converting into decimal because usually students make this mistake that instead of uh, subtracting 0.0481 because it has a percentage sign they will subtract 4.81 so do not make this mistake the current yield will be 8.19% not the current yield sorry the capital gains yield will be 8.19% now over here 
Remember the growth rate during the first three years was 30%. But this growth rate is not constant. If it would have been constant, you didn't even have to calculate this. In that case, your capital gain yield would have been your growth rate. They would have been equal. But because over here, it wasn't constant forever. It was going to change. You cannot use that. But in the fourth year, it becomes constant at the 6% rate. So in the fourth year, you can assume that the capital gain yield will also be 6%. Well, let's do it through an example in order to make sure that you understand it. So I'm going to go ahead. So fourth year, during non-constant growth, dividend yield and capital gain yield are not constant and capital gain yield does not equal to your growth rate. So when the growth rate was 30% chal tha, starting in three years, mein, वहाँ पे growth rate आपके capital gain yield के बराबर नहीं है ठीक है बहुत आर different capital gain yield आपने निकाला it was coming 8.19 percent during this time whereas after T3 the stock has constant growth and capital gain yield so when it becomes constant forever your capital gain yield and your growth rate become equal. So, you have to capital gain. Capital gain is 6% here. Now, so if we calculate the values, okay, so it's not done over here. Wait. Okay, so over here, your capital gains yield. So, again, you can use the same formula R is equals to. Dividend yield plus capital gains yield. I know this is 13%. Dividend yield you do not know. And the capital gains yield is 6%. Okay, why is it 6% directly over here? Because over here the growth rate is constant forever. Now this is plus over here. On that side it will become negative. So this is your dividend yield. You can just solve this now.